let's look at the difference between VLOOKUP and XLOOKUP. Both VLOOKUP and XLOOKUP are part of the lookup family of functions in Excel. VLOOKUP is the much older brother to the new and improved XLOOKUP. Now, XLOOKUP is only available in Office 365 and with a planned rollout to other versions during 2020. The VLOOKUP has three required and one optional argument. Three required and one optional. Whereas the XLOOKUP has three required arguments and three optional arguments. Now just looking at this, you can see already that XLOOKUP packs a much bigger punch than VLOOKUP. So let's look at this example. You can see a list of members over here, as well as an area where the same members have registered for some workshops. The area for workshop registrations lacks information about the members that we need. So a first name, last name, membership status. We can complete this information by using the member ID field from both lists to find the required information. So I'll do a VLOOKUP first and then an XLOOKUP and then you can see the difference. All right, first VLOOKUP. My lookup value is the first argument. It's going to be the member ID. So we'll click on that. The table array is next. That wants to know where will Excel find the member ID. It's going to be in this column here. The table array also needs to include the range that Excel must return. That's the first name. So we'll select that as well. You have to include at least two columns for this to work. And for completeness sake, we'll also include the last name. It doesn't make too much difference here. The column index number indicates which of the three columns must be the return value. It's going to be the first name, so it's column one, two, the second column. So we enter two. And lastly, Excel must do an exact match. So we need to type in false because the default for VLOOKUP is an approximate match. So if you want to do an exact match, you have to specifically state that you want exact by typing in false. So that gives me the member ID for 12658. It gives me Steve as the first name. And if we look down here in the column, we can confirm that visually. So that looks correct. So now let's try the X lookup and you can see the difference. X lookup, the lookup value. So far, this process is exactly the same as VLOOKUP. We'll select the member ID as the first argument. But here's the first difference. Lookup array and return array. The next two arguments, lookup array and return array, are basically the table array from VLOOKUP, but now it's split into two arguments. So lookup array, which column will we find the member ID? It's going to be right over here in column J, so we'll select that. And then the next argument is return array. That wants to know in which column is the first name that we need to return, and that's right here in column K. So instead of selecting these two as a table array together in VLOOKUP, and then the next argument would be the number two to select the return, in XLOOKUP, we're going to split them. So let's pause here just for a second because splitting those two has big benefits. The fact that they're split means that instead of in VLOOKUP, where you find a value on the left and you're forced to look in a column to the right for a return array. With XLOOKUP, this return array can now be in column K, it can be in column L, somewhere to the right, or even to the left, like over here in column I. So your return array can be to the left or right of the lookup array. The other benefit is that in VLOOKUP, you have to hard code the column that you'll be returning like we did when we typed in the number two. But if you add a column in between J and K, then you'll have to manually go back and fix the formula. However, with XLOOKUP, with all relative arguments like these, if you insert a column between J and K, it's no problem because the formula will fix itself. Another benefit is that instead of selecting just a column, you could select a row. So this means that XLOOKUP could also replace HLOOKUP, which is nice. And one last benefit is that you can include two columns as your return array. If we include first name and last name in the return array, and we have first name and last name next to one another in the empty spaces here, it can return first name and last name all in one formula. So I don't want to spend too much time on the optional arguments because you can look at that in our XLOOKUP videos, but the first one is nice and easy, if not found. 
This is where you can customize the generic not found error message that occurs within XLOOKUP. Normally you'll get an NA error if you're looking for say a member ID that I can't find in the lookup table. So you'll get this message that says NA not applicable. But if you see that, you might think that you did something wrong. But in XLOOKUP, you can create your own nice custom message. For example, you could type in value not found. And instead of the not applicable message, you'll get this custom value not found message. And you'll know that it's an issue with the data and not some kind of formula error. So that's a nice benefit. The next argument is match mode. In VLOOKUP, this would be either true or false for an exact or approximate match. But in XLOOKUP, you have four different options. The important thing you need to know here is that the default is now exact match. For VLOOKUP, the default was approximate. So if you want to do an exact match in VLOOKUP, you have to type in false. But in XLOOKUP, the exact match is the default value, so you don't have to type anything in. So when you close the parentheses and hit enter, the XLOOKUP works. And not only will it work for the first name of Pete, but it also works for the last name. And if you visually check this ID, 23432, it is indeed Pete Skeeter. So with all that additional functionality, you can now see why XLOOKUP is going to be so much more popular than VLOOKUP. Hey everyone, this is Dan from GoSkills. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like below, leave a comment, and make sure you subscribe to the channel and get more tutorials in the future.